Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. 
Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here, though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then, after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles, or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for you'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. 
and if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you'll feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love, because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Hi, I'm Louise. Hi, everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Danish.
In the last lesson, you learned how to use the verb at komme. We will now jump into a lesson dedicated to question words in Danish. Up first is one of the most commonly used question word, what. You'll see that it's a short and simple word in Danish. So imagine you want to ask your friend, what are you doing? How will you do it? You will ask, hvad laver du? Hvad laver du? So let's break down this question. Hvad is what in Danish. Leva is the present tense of the verb to do. And finally, du, as you're probably familiar with by now, is you. So all together it is, hvad laver du? What are you doing? You may remember that we already learned this question a few lessons ago, but there are several other ways to pose the same question. The most important thing, however, is that all of them start with vel. The rule is simple. In Danish, vel will always be the first word in a sentence when asking a what question. Asking someone's name would be, Vel hedder du? Vel hedder du? Here, vel is the first word followed by hedder, which means is called or named. And finally, du, which you should know by now, means you. Asking, what is that, is as easy as in English. Just say, Vel er det? Vel er det? Also, you can use a familiar verb to ask about people's preferences. Hvad slags mad kan du lide? Hvad slags mad kan du lide? It means, what kind of food do you like? I bet you already know how to answer this. Jeg kan godt lide. That means, I like. Now it's time for Louise's insights. A very commonly used phrase in Danish is, hvad så? What's up? Like English, the phrase is used to start a conversation. It's an incredibly practical phrase to have when you're around Danes. Besser. Before ending this lesson, let's look at one more use for vel, a question you will likely hear quite often in Denmark. It's, hvad vil du have? What do you want? Hvad vil du have? You will no doubt hear it when people are serving you food in restaurants, cafes, and so on. So remember it in case someone asks. In this lesson, you learn the Danish word for what. In the next lesson, we will look at the word for where. I'll be waiting for you in the next dance for three minutes lesson. Had a god! Hi, I'm Louise. Hi, everybody. I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's dance for three minutes. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson, you learned how to ask what questions in Danish. This time you're going to learn how to ask where questions. Imagine you're trying to find your friend in a crowd. You will text him, hvor er du? This is the exact translation of where are you? Hvor er du? So let's break down this question. First we had hvor, which is a basic translation of where in Danish. Er, which is are, the present tense form of the verb at være, which we already studied. Finally, du, which is the word for you. So all together it is, hvor er du? Where are you? In Danish, where is translated as hvor. So for example, if you want to ask, where do you live? You will say, hvor bor du? As in English, the question word is placed in the first position here, then the verb and then the subject. So let's see some more questions that feature hvor. Say you want to ask where you're going with your friends. It's as easy as saying, hvor skal vi hen? Hvor skal vi? Hen. You might remember skal from one of our previous lessons. You may also ask where someone is from by saying, Hvor er du fra? Hvor er du fra? Which translates as, where are you from? Now it's time for Louise's insights. If they've forgotten where they left something, Danes tend to ask themselves where they left it. Say your friend forgot where she left her key. She would say, Hvor lager nøglerne? Where did I put the keys? It's funny to hear them mumbling to themselves, but the sentence itself can be turned into a practical question. If you switch the pronoun, you can ask others where they left something. Say you want to know where your friend put the remote control. Just ask, hvor lagde du fjernbetjeningen? Where did you put the remote control? Hvor lagde du fjernbetjeningen? Before ending this lesson, let's look at one more usage for hvor. Let's say you are lost somewhere in Denmark and you want to know where the station is. To ask a stranger, simply stop them by saying, Undskyld, excuse me. You should remember this word. Then ask, 
Ved du, hvor nærmeste station er? Do you know where the closest station is? Ved du, hvor nærmeste station er? Of course you can substitute nærmeste station with any other place like operan or the opera. Ved du, hvor operan er? Simple as that. In this lesson you learn how to correctly use the Danish word for where, hvor. Now you can avoid getting lost. In the next lesson we learn more about asking questions. This time using when in Danish. I'll be waiting for you in the next dansk på 3 minutter lesson. Vi ses! Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Hi, I'm Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to danishclass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson we learned how to ask where questions in Danish. This time we're going to ask when questions. Imagine you want to ask when your roommate is coming back home. You will text him or her, Hvornår kommer du tilbage? Hvornår kommer du tilbage? So let's break down this question. First we had Hvornår, which is the basic translation of when in Danish. Kommer is the verb to come, at komme in the present tense, as you might remember. Then du, which is the word for you. And finally tilbage, which is back. So all together it is, hvornår kommer du tilbage? When will you come back? So in Danish, when is translated as hvornår. Here's another example. If you want to ask, when were you born? It would be, hvornår blev du født? Like in the last two lessons, the question word goes at the beginning of the sentence. So let's have a look at another example. How can you say, when did you arrive? It is really simple since it is exactly the same pattern. Hvornår kom du? First we have hvornår, which is when. The second word is kom, which is the verb at komme in the past tense. Finally, du is you. If you want to ask a question about duration, such as since when have you been a teacher, then you will have to say siden hvornår har du været lærer. Here too, it's exactly the same as in English, because since is siden, so siden hvornår means since when. Let's say you want to meet a friend. How would you ask, when shall we meet in Danish? It's very easy because you can translate it directly. It becomes, hvornår skal vi mødes? Here we use a verb you have already learned, skal, which is the present tense of at skulle. Then we have we, which in Danish is vi. And finally, mødes, which is derived from the verb at møde, which means to meet. But of course, there are other ways to ask about time. You can even be more specific by asking about the year, the date, or the hour. For example, you can ask, When did you start working this year? Which will be, Hvornår begyndte du at arbejde i år? Or, When is it best for you today? Which will be, Hvornår er det bedst for dig i dag? Or, When did you travel in June? Which will be, Hvornår i juni rejste du? Now it's time for Louise's insights. To ask how long an action has been taking place in Danish, we say hvor længe. It sounds a lot like how long in English, doesn't it? And the sentence is similar in structure too. Hvor længe har, as in hvor længe har du ventet, that is how long have you been waiting. Okay, so in this lesson you learn how to correctly use the Danish word for when, no, and also a bit about hvor længe. In the next lesson you learn more about asking who questions in Danish. I'll be waiting for you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. Til næste gang! Hej, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned how to ask when questions in Danish. This time you're going to ask who questions. Imagine you want to ask your friend who the girl sitting behind him is. You can pass him a note that reads, Hvem er det bag dig? Hvem er det bag dig? This means, who is that behind you? So let's break down this question. First we had, Hvem, which is the basic translation of who in Danish. Er means is, the present tense of the verb at være, which we have already studied. Det means that. 
And finally, Beidai, which is behind you. Dai is the object pronoun for you. Altogether, it is Vem er det Beidai? So in Danish, who is translated as Vem? If you want to ask who are these people, you can say Vem er disse mennesker? Here's another example using Vem. If you're in a museum, you can ask Vem malet det billede? This means who painted this painting? A similar word derived from Vem is vis. In this case, the meaning is whose. So if you want to ask whose pencil is it, you will have to say vis blyant er det? If we break down this question, it is vis, which is whose, blyant, which is pencil. Then we have er, which is the present tense of the verb at være, which you should know. And finally, de, which means it. You can also use the word vem to ask for which person is it. So if you want to know for which person is this piece of cake, you can ask vem er dette stykke kage til? Now it's time for Louise's insights. If someone that you didn't expect is knocking on your door in Denmark, you can ask, Hvem er det? before opening the door. This literally means, who is it? Although it's not that common to ask this, usually Danes will just say, hello. In this lesson, you learn how to correctly use Vim. The next lesson will be a last of this absolute beginner series. You will deal with the final question word, hvorfor. I'll be waiting for you in the next dance for 3 minutes lesson. For again soon. Hi, I'm Louise. Hi everybody. I'm Louise. Welcome to danishclass101.com's dance for 3 minutes. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned how to ask who questions in Danish. In this last lesson you're going to learn how to ask why questions. Imagine your boss is giving you a call because you're not at work today. He will certainly ask you, Hvorfor er du ikke på arbejde i dag? Hvorfor er du ikke på arbejde i dag? So let's break down this question. First we had hvorfor, which is the basic translation of why in Danish. Er is the present tense of the verb at være. Du is the word for you. Then ikke, which is not. Then på arbejde means at work. And finally, i dag, which is today. Altogether, it is, hvorfor er du ikke på arbejde i dag? Why are you not at work today? So in Danish, hvorfor is how to say why. For example, if your boss wants to know why you're late today, he will ask, hvorfor er du for single i dag? Let's look at some other uses for hvorfor. If someone says something you don't agree with, you can tell them, hvorfor tror du det? Why do you think that? Hvorfor tror du det? Or if you're upset about the train being late, you can ask, Hvorfor er toget for single? Why is the train late? Hvorfor er toget for singet? Try not to be disappointed if the answer to both questions is, Jeg ved ikke hvorfor. I don't know why. Jeg ved ikke hvorfor. Now it's time for Louise's insights. A famous expression in Denmark is hvorfor ikke, which means as in English, why not? You can use it to accept a suggestion. For example, if a friend asks you suddenly, do you want to see a movie tonight? You can answer hvorfor ikke, why not? This lesson is the last of the absolute beginner video series, but it's hopefully not the last you learn about the Danish language. To take your language ability to the next level, check out danishclass101.com the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Danish. Had it got? Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal? something that you really want? 
Well, today you're going to learn one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining. No bad news. But you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases, and it feels good. You're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much, and this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad. But that's completely natural, and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now let's jump into the second part: why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, "Okay, can't be done today. Stop. We're done." But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger, and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day. But you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement, and it doesn't matter if you do a 10-minute lesson or a 5-minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one-minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30-second to one-minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three-month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress, and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. 
To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording, if you're brave. Like and share this video, and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye! Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye.